Hey, AP Pre-Calc, here we are. Chapter three, lesson one, day two, moving along here. We're gonna look at periodic functions, periodic phenomenon. In our definition here, we say the function f is a periodic function of x. If and only if there's some number k for which the function at x plus n times k is equal to the y value of the function for all values of x in the domain. If k is the smallest such number, then k is going to be called the period of the function. Let's experiment with that. In example 7, consider the periodic function shown in our graph. What would the period of the function be and what is the value of k? In this case, it looks like every four units we have a new end of a cycle. If we complete the function behavior on the grid at the right, we would go from 6, 3 to 7, negative 2. And then we would go from 7, negative 2 over to 10, 3. And then we would go from 10, 3 to 11, negative 2. And then we would repeat that pattern. Show that f of x plus n times k is equal to f of x and show that it's valid for 1, 2, and 3 for any minimum value of the graph. Well, we already know that the minimum occurs at negative 5, negative 2. So if we begin there and use that formula f of negative 5 plus n being 1 times k being the period, the f of negative 5 plus 1 is going to be the f of negative 1, and the f of negative 1 should be negative 2, our minimum value, and it is. We want to repeat that for n being 2 and n being 3. So the f of negative 5 plus n equals 2 times 4 2 times 4 is 8, minus 5 is the f of 3. So the f of 3 should also be negative 2, and it is. And then finally, repeating for n equals 3, f of 3 times 4, that's 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. The f of 7 is also negative 2. So we've proven this statement to be correct. Example 8 is giving us the temperature high averages in Austin, Texas for each month. And our job is to graph that, so I want to use the x-axis as 1, 2, 3, 4 through 12, so that we have all the months showing up on our graph in the first 12 segments on the x-axis. So spend a minute with me graphing this curve on the grid. So I have my picture here. I've sketched the graph, labeled the x-axis as M for months, and labeled the y-axis as capital T for temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. If we describe the period of the function, I would say that that's 12 months or one year. And one thing that's missing is the amplitude. And the amplitude for part C is half of the maximum minus the minimum. Absolute value of that. The maximum is 100. The minimum is 63. Taking that from the table, half of 37 is 18 and a half, so we could figure our midline by looking at 100 minus 18 and a half, or 63 plus 18 and a half. That's going to put us at 81 and a half for our midline, and we can sketch that in in red. So we got at 81 and a half, we've got our midline going across here. 81 and a half, somewhere in there. So 
so that we have 18 and a half as a maximum amplitude and then we have 18 and a half below the midline for the amplitude. That was just a quick practical application of periodic functions. In example 9, we're going to talk about the characteristics that periodic functions display. They have intervals of increase, intervals of decrease, concavity, rates of change. So taking a look at the image on example 9, the period appears to go from negative 6 over to positive 2 or negative 2 over to positive 6. So the period is 8 units long. The amplitude is the distance from the x-axis to the maximum or x-axis to the minimum. That puts our amplitude at 3. The max is 3. The min is negative 3. And the intervals of concave up. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to erase here. So we have a maximum. That's our upper bound here, maximum. And we have a minimum is our lower bound. And points of inflection, that's where concavity changes. So here, this x-intercepts, all of these x-intercepts, these are called points of inflection. Thinking about concavity, we are concave down in this section. And then from negative 4 to 0, we're concave up. From 0 to 4, we're concave down. And from 4 to 8, our graph is concave up. So this is concave up. And this is concave up. These sections are concave down. And this is called a point of inflection. Point of inflection. A point of inflection. To write an interval for concave up, we could say that we start at negative 4, negative 4, and you add 8 times any integer, or you subtract 8 times any integer, and you go over to 0, and you add or subtract 8 times some integer, as long as the n values are 1, 2, 3, and so forth. They're integers. Our points of inflection are beginning at negative 4, plus or minus 4n, for n being an integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Negative values. n is an integer. I like to use the capital Z. For part E, intervals of concave down. Concave down starts here at negative 8. And you can add or subtract 1 period, 2 periods, whatever. And we go over to negative 4. Concavity changes at the next point of inflection. And we're adding and subtracting any integer. n is an element of the integers. Example 10, can you identify the following characteristics? The period, let's see if we from this high point and go over to this high point. It looks like it's 8 again. The amplitude goes from 4 to negative 3, so 4 minus negative 3 is 7 divided by 2, that's 3 and a half. Maximum value is at 4, that's our upper bound. Minimum value is negative 3, that's our lower bound. 
and intervals of increase. So you got to think about this a minute. Where is the function increasing? So we're increasing from negative 2 to negative 1. We're increasing from 2 to 3, 6 to 7, 10 to 11. Can you put that in some kind of interval notation? So I have an interval of increase from negative 2 plus or minus 8n and negative 1 plus or minus 8n. So it starts at negative 2 and it stops at negative 1. We could also say we have one that's different. So highlighting that just a second, this one represents this statement. But this one, this interval of increase, is going to represent a different statement. And I'm going to say that second one starts at 2, plus or minus the period, and stops at 3, plus or minus the period. So we have two different ways to talk about the intervals of increase, providing your value for n is an integer. Intervals of decrease would be decreasing. We're going to start at negative 5 and stop at negative 2, but then we're also going to have a different one. Let's see, let's use blue. That starts at negative 1 and stops at positive 2. So writing those intervals of decrease, we start at negative 5 and add or subtract a period. We stop at negative 2 by adding and subtracting a period. And we also have from negative 1 plus or minus 8n stopping at 2 plus or minus 8n, where n is an element of the integers. Finally, let's find the average rates of change on the intervals from 2 to 3. So this is just our slope. The average rate of change on that first interval from 2 to 3, from 2 to 3, the rise is 7 and the run is 1, so the rate of change is 7. The average rate of change from 3 to 6, starting at 3 and going to 6, from 3 to 6, so we're rising 7 and the run is 3. So the rise is 7 in a negative direction. So rise, negative 7, run 3. The average rate of change between 6 and 7 for that interval, the rise is 5 and the run is 1. And then finally, the last little section, the average rate of change on the interval from 7 to 10. So we fall down 5 and we run th right 3. So rates of change, intervals of increase, intervals of decrease, max, min, amplitude, and concavity, all important topics for periodic phenomenon. Example 11, we have a storm siren that makes two and a half rotations per minute and the sound waves have a radius of one mile. Mr. Tyler's house is located one mile south from the siren. The distance of the sound wave from his house varies periodically as a function of time. What is the period of the function in seconds. Let's use dimensional analysis for, for that. So we have time per cycle and we have 60 seconds in one minute. In one minute we have a two and a half revolutions. 
So dividing out minutes to minutes and 60 divided by two and a half means we have 24 seconds for one revolution. So we have the period of the function is 24 seconds. And we can sketch that. Amplitude is the sound amplitude is the sound wave. And we have a midline right at one. We have two and then 12 and then 24 is a maximum. So halfway between and then halfway between and a minimum, halfway a maximum, halfway a minimum. So you have this oscillation going on here. Where this axis is time, minutes and seconds, and this is the distance on the y-axis. And finally, example 12, a Ferris wheel at the Orlando Eye Attraction is 120 meters in diameter. The height in meters of a compartment H is a function of time T in minutes. It takes about 30 minutes to make one complete revolution. Let the height of the car where you enter the ride represent the height at time T equals zero and we want to find the amplitude. So first let me sketch what's going on and then we'll figure out how this oscillation looks on our graph. So you can see I've made a little sketch of what's actually going on. If we enter the ride here at the ground level and it takes us 30 minutes to go one complete revolution, then halfway we're at 15 at the maximum and we're intervals of 7 minutes, 15, 22 and a half, 30. So I divided up 30 minutes into one complete revolution. To find the amplitude, we want to take half of the maximum minus the minimum, and they said the diameter is 120. So we can use that half of 120 to find that the amplitude is 60. We want to sketch the graph of the function, and we know at 15 minutes we're going to reach the maximum height. So 15 minutes, that's going to put our midline is at 60. So we can sketch that in. We know we're going to start at the ground, 0, 0, and at 15 minutes we're going to be at 120 in the air. And then at seven and a half, we're at 60. So seven and a half is right about here. And then at 22 and a half, we're back to 60. And then at 30 minutes, we're at the ground. So that smooth oscillating curve behaves just like that. On our graph, we could label this seven and a half is at 60 feet, 15 minutes, we're at 120 feet, 22 and a half minutes, we're at 60 feet again, and at 30 minutes, we're back on the ground. And that's all we have for Lesson 3.1 in AP Pre-Calc.